about your matches with the Big Show? Did you have a good relationship with him? Yes, I liked him. Bit of a crybaby, but he's a hell of a worker. If he wasn't such a good worker, he'd kill us, you know, because he's so big and strong. And if he didn't hold back, he would have killed us. Killed me anyways. And I like working big guys like him because he does stuff I don't do. I fly, he does it. He smashes me, I don't smash him. I hit him, he smashes me. He does things I don't do. It makes it good for me to wrestle him. And and uh, I can dive at him, he's big. You know, he can catch me. He it's only almost, drops me if he wants to. Is it almost like a David Goliath kind of thing yeah. with him? Yeah, not just him, anybody. My dream opponent for my retirement match would be Brock Lesnar. It'll never happen, but I like Brock. I love Brock. I don't even know him, but I like his work. I like what he does. He doesn't do anything I do. Everything he does, I don't do. And that's what that's what I want to do. I want to wrestle somebody who doesn't do my shit. Like a polar opposite. Polar character. opposite. It, the less you, the less you do what I do, the better. A lot of guys are like, well, he's a big guy. He can do a moonsault. But he shouldn't do a moonsault. That's for junior heavyweights. That's for littler guys. You, you don't do little guy moves to the big guy. It's okay now and then. But once when Ben Vader did a moonsault, it killed it. Then Terry Funk, nothing against Terry Funk. He did a moonsault to kill it. Everybody did moonsaults, you know. And what got me over is my uncle taught me, you do moves that it looks like you should do. You don't do moves where you don't look like it. Like, I don't look like a power wrestler. I shouldn't do a gorilla press. I shouldn't do a power bomb. But I look like I should dive and, and fly. And that, that's what I do. I do things that I look like I, I, I should do. That's what gets you over with the fans, you know. It's good to have now and then to have a, a fat guy do a moonsault or something, but not regular. He's taking my move. That's what I do, you know? But every once in a blue moon, so they pull that out. Yeah, it's okay. It's like a table. I don't care if someone else breaks a table. It's not the same guy every night besides me. I don't even break a table every night, but I hit it when the same guy breaks a table every night because now that's their move. Instead of being a fluke, it's their move. And I didn't like that. Like Public Enemy would break a table. I let it go a couple times, and then they couldn't have a match without breaking a table. If they didn't break a table, they weren't giving them their money's worth. Paul Lee didn't protect me on that. He let everybody break a table, kind of kill my gimmick, you know. And and uh, if the promoter don't don't protect you, you're nothing. You know, I can't stop those guys from doing it. I can threaten them, but I can't stop them. He can stop them. It becomes a crutch for them, too. They yeah, have, they have now, to have now they, if, they, if they can't use the table, they're less, you know. So I made up with it with a chair. Now, now most of my chair stuff is still fresh, but uh, eventually I have to move on to something else, a gun. <laughs> we just talked about the big show match that you had and earlier in his career you know you see him do a drop kick here or there you see him do some crazy stuff now but and then it, but now not in the match that you guys had it was well, more, no, yeah, exactly it, but it would have looked kind of ridiculous if he was you know flying off the top and you know why would he why would the big show do that one right? he doesn't have to he's already on the top he's a giant you know he doesn't have to and two he'd only do it to try one up me you don't want to one up your opponent you don't want to show up to your opponent. You want you want to bring him up so look at you beating somebody, not not beating a nobody, a nobody. You know what I mean? Big Show was he's pretty gracious about putting me over. He sold everything I did to him. Now and then, uh, he bitched about my chairs were too stiff, but other than that, he was he was uh, okay. Actually, Vince told him to grow up, and quit crying about the chair. <laughs> that was probably the best stuff from that the new uh, the later ECW. Yeah, their that, version of that it. was. Polly was still in the book at that t at that moment. Polly was still in the in the book. Uh, shortly after that, he was taken out of it, and that went downhill for me. Paul Heyman was the only promoter that really understood me. Would let me do what I, I thought was natural. He never questioned me. He understood how to present you to. Well, the creative process. If you're gonna question me or I gotta run something through you, it's not it's not my art no more. It's your art. But if I do my thing the way I want to do it, the way I, I I think it feels right, he trusted that. And, and, and only I can do that, you know. Someone can tell me other things to do, and it, it wouldn't be me, you know. Although I might be able to do them, it wouldn't be me. I'd have to work to try to do them. The stuff I do, it, it's almost natural. It's uh, spontaneous almost, you know. It, it, it happens. I don't have to think about it. It happens. It's organic. That's what makes it art, yes. Uh, art is something that you'll do even if you don't get paid. That's why there's such things called a starving artist. It means you'll do your art even if you don't make, even if you don't get paid. Even if, if you starve, you'll still be painting or you'll still be resting. You know that's how I feel. I am a starving artist. I still do my art even though I don't make top dollar. I didn't get into it for for money. I thought money would be there, but I didn't do it for money. I did. I loved wrestling. I I loved it. it uh, it's something you can't grow out of. For me, that is. I tried growing out of it, but I keep coming back. <laughs>